Today, I'm going to explain the movie, The Man with the Iron Fists, released in the year 2012. The premise of the movie is set in 19th century China. The jungle village is home to several budding clans. The years-long rivalry between them has caused the village to turn into a bloodbath. At the beginning of the film, we're introduced to the village's blacksmith, responsible for making deadly weapons for the clans. He doesn't fancy being the root of violence that the clans cause, but he has to earn money for the love of his life, Silk. She is a prostitute at the Pink Blossom Brothel. The blacksmith plans to earn enough money to buy her out of the brothel and move to a different town with her. One of the most powerful clans of the village is the Lion Clan. The leader, Gold Lion, and his lieutenants, Silver and Bronze, are the respected people of the town. One day, the trio is called to the governor's office to be tasked with a special mission. They're asked to protect a large shipment of gold that must pass through the town. Gold Lion is ready to protect the gold with his life, but his lieutenants grow selfish. Wanting to rob the shipment, they betray their leader and kill him. At the same time, Gold's son, Zen Yi, is with his girlfriend who he wishes to marry. He's informed about his father's death and has to rush to the village. Before departing, he promises to return after avenging his father's killer. Back in the town, the lieutenants make it seem like Gold's death was the Wolf Clan's fault. The members of their clan believe them and appoint Silver as the new leader. As the leader, he plots them against the Wolf Clan and encourages them to start a fight. The wolves get a hint of this and prepare themselves for the attack. As the rivalry is triggered, the blacksmith's shop is filled with customers of many clans. He prepares weapons for them to fight while staying neutral in the situation. With the news of the gold shipment going around, several dangerous strangers start getting interested in the jungle village. One of such strangers is Jack Knife. He is an undercover emissary sent by the Qing Emperor to keep an eye on the gold. He makes the first stop at the Pink Blossom Brothel and meets the owner, Blossom. He is welcomed wholeheartedly, but things get intense when a man refuses to let go of a girl that Jack likes. As a result, Jack slices his stomach in half. As everyone watches in shock, he introduces himself and sets his dominance. After the commotion, no one comes in his way and he gets all the girls he wants. In another room, the blacksmith meets Silk and gives her the final payment to free her from the place. Meanwhile, Zen Yi is getting closer to the village. On the way, he's met with thugs sent by Silver to kill him. Silver doesn't want Gold's descendants to take over the position that he worked so hard for. However, his plan fails when the thugs are easily defeated by Zen Yi. His armor is made of several mechanical weapons which help him kill all of them. Silver is informed of the failure, but he is confident he'll get Zen Yi one way or the other. Currently, all he cares about is the gold that's coming in a few days. It turns out that the shipment is being protected by the great warrior duo, the Gemini. Moreover, with Jack there to safeguard the gold, robbing it would be very difficult. That night, Zen Yi is approached by two men from the clan who have gotten a hint of Silver's corrupt nature. After hearing what they have to say, Zen Yi is cautious of his own people. It's only a matter of days before he learns who actually killed his father. In the following scene, we see Silver and his associate, Poison Dagger, meet a mercenary named Brass. He has been called to kill Zen Yi. In the evening, Brass makes his attack and kills several people in the town. Zen Yi comes forward to stop him, but his attacks are fruitless in front of Brass's skin, which turns to the metal on impact. After an intense fight, Zen Yi is severely injured. But before he dies, the blacksmith saves him without being noticed by Brass. The next day, the Gemini arrives at the town with the governor's gold. Their plan is to stay the night at a post and continue north in the morning. But the schedule is hindered when Silver and his men arrive with a proposal. They ask the Gemini to turn in their gold in turn for their lives. But the warriors don't want to give up before a fight. And so, a battle ensues, where the Gemini initially has the upper hand. Silver's associate, Poison Dagger, joins the fight and slyly attacks the warriors with a poison needle. In the end, the Geminis die, and Silver wins yet another round. The gold is now all his to keep. Jack arrives at the location to see the aftermath of the fight. On investigating the bodies, he quickly realizes that the Lion Clan has been corrupt. The governor also finds out that his gold was stolen by the Lion Clan. Enraged by the intrusion, he sends the mighty Jackal troops to find and kill the people who stole it. If not, they're ordered to burn down the entire town. Zen Yi finally gains consciousness after yesterday's fight. 
the blacksmith decides to help him make a new body armor since the last one was destroyed in the fight. He feels guilty for making the weapon that Gold was killed with, hence he wants to do something good by helping his son. However, Silver gets a hint of the blacksmith working day and night making the body armor. Since the armor is Zen Yi's specialty, it doesn't take him long before discovering the blacksmith is helping Zen Yi. Silver and Brass take the blacksmith hostage and torture him for Zen Yi's whereabouts. But the man remains loyal to his friend and doesn't reveal anything. The villains then cut off both of his hands and leave him to die. Jack arrives at his rescue just in time and helps him heal from the injuries. When the blacksmith gains consciousness, he is bandaged and treated with a hot metal rod. After recovering, the blacksmith tells Jack of his past. He used to be an emancipated American slave who was very talented but discriminated against. One day, two white men beat him for fun and he killed one of them. The death was purely accidental, but the other man refused to let go of the matter. As a last resort, the blacksmith fled America by boat and ended up in China. He was saved by Buddhist monks who trained him to use his body's energy to perform superhuman feats. While recovering in bed, the blacksmith remembers all the lessons he was taught by the head monk. Then one day, he creates artificial arms and uses a furnace to join them to his body. In the end, he's equipped with a pair of exponentially strong arms. He tests them by slamming on a heavy metal body and crashing it into pieces. Everyone who witnesses this is shocked by his perseverance. In the meantime, Zen Yi recovers quickly under the care of Silk. She tells him about the rumors of the blacksmith's death. After hearing the news, he quickly sets off to look for Silver. At night, Zen Yi finds Jack and the blacksmith in their hideout. They join hands to end Silver and his rule together. But on the other hand, Silver and Poison Dagger also join hands with the owner of the brothel, Blossom. They decide to hide the gold in a secret chamber inside the brothel and give 3% of it to Blossom in turn for her help. Since the Jackal Warriors are arriving in the town in a few days to attack, they have to be extra careful. The gold is stored in a chest raised up to the rafters in the secret room. Blossom slyly mentions that the room has many traps that will make a man scream if he's not careful. When she's not around, the Poison Dagger shows his face for the first time. He and Silver want to kill every woman in the brothel and betray Blossom to avoid paying her. While they discuss the plan, a little girl overhears them from under a table. She brings the information to Jack, who has befriended the neighborhood kids earlier. Now they know where the gold is hidden. They can outsmart the enemy. Blossom also finds out about the men's tactic to betray her, but she has already prepared herself for it. She walks into the bathhouse full of her employees who she loves dearly. Her presence makes them stop what they're doing, knowing she has something important to say. It turns out that Blossom has prepared the girls for whatever obstacle they face in their work, including self-defense and fighting. When the men of the Lion Clan come to the brothel that evening, the girls are ready for them. Each pair goes to their rooms for private time. The ruthless Brass chooses Silk and forcefully brings her to a room. When things get steamy, Blossom alerts the girls with a noise. At this very instant, they stab the men with a poison needle hidden in their mouths. Most of Lion's men are dead, except for Brass, whose skin armor saves him from the attack. When he senses that Silk is trying to kill him, he beats her up, almost to death. Outside, the girls join Blossom as a new group called the Black Widows. They attack the remaining men and fight them. At the same time, the blacksmith arrives and finds the love of his life on the verge of death. She talks to him for the last time before dying in his arms. Somewhere in the tunnels, the little girl leads Zen Yi and Jack into the brothel's bunker. But before they can get to the gold, they bump into the men from the Lion Clan. In the ensuing fight, the blacksmith ends up going one-on-one -on -one with Brass. Jack fights the poison dagger while Zen Yi goes against Silver. Blossom and Bronze also get into an intense battle. Blossom manages to wound Bronze gravely, but is stabbed to death while trying to save a little girl. Both of them die in the end. Jack and Poison Dagger end up in the mechanical room of a clock tower. They fight while dodging the gears, but in the middle of the fight, Poison Dagger is caught in a machine. The gears pull him towards it and crushes him, causing his immediate death. In the battle between the blacksmith and Brass, Brass initially wins, but against the blacksmith's new strong hands, Brass's body armor proves to be weak. To make himself stronger, Brass goes into the full armor form, but is shattered into pieces. 
The blacksmith finally avenges the death of his lover. Lastly, Zen Yi finds Silver in a house of mirrors. Silver has an upper hand having been accustomed to the place. As the fight proceeds, they end up in the tomb. Zen Yi is almost defeated, but as a last resort, he cuts the coffin free. It falls and crushes Silver, finally ending his life. Jack runs outside to find the Jackal troop about to ambush the entire town in retaliation to the gold being stolen. He is just in time to stop them from decimating the building. After the chaos ends, Jack leaves the village to accompany the governor's gold, which is finally about to reach the destination it was supposed to. Zen Yi declares the blacksmith his brother. The system of clans and rivalry between them ends, and peace prevails in the village for the first time. The blacksmith vows to keep the village safe, destroying the sign pointing to his weapon shop. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this, and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.